As you approach Minthara, you feel her mind reaching out to yours, tentative and curious. Then it retreats, soft as a whisper. Sorry, old habits. At first, she seems to invite you inside. But then a coldness settles across your mind like morning frost, and you lose contact with her. Wait, let me speak. When we first met, I did not think we would ever share anything more than an uneasy alliance, born of our mutual enmity for the absolute. I was wrong. A deeper bond has grown between us. I trust you, but I would like to touch your thoughts again. Now that my mind is my own, may I? Of course, I do not hide anything from you. Until my time in the Cult of the Absolute, I had spent little time on the surface, except to raid and pillage. I did not expect to find any outside the Underdark who saw the world as I do, and wanted from the world what I want. I did not expect. You. I have been told that I am special since my mother first held me in her arms. The burden of expectation. Before the Absolute, I lived a life of certainties. I knew that I was destined for greatness because I was born to it. I also knew that my inherited privilege came with a cost that the bonds of fellowship and family could be broken by envy and ambition. I could not enjoy the taste of food for fear of poisoning, and I could not enjoy the company of lovers and friends because I feared they hid knives behind their smiles. In spite of the danger, I was happy. I knew myself, and I understood the world around me. Now, nothing is certain without love. Without the Absolute, without my home, I do not know myself. But you do, I think. Show me myself through your eyes. Let me see what I am to you. She joins her thoughts with yours, and you are as one. You share in her strength of mind and formidable will, but also the doubts that eat at her conviction. Those doubts cluster in swarms, and the thickest is around her sense of self. She pushes past, revealing the image of her you hold in your mind. What does she see? The cold shell of Minthara's mind melts away and you are drawn into the heart of her. Warm, passionate, and dangerous. I have never lacked confidence, but this conflict seems so much bigger than the two of us. It frightens me. I do not know if we will survive it. But whatever life remains to us, I would gladly spend it fighting at your side and lying with you at night. Her mind touches yours, feather light and hesitant. A stark contrast to the confidence with which her thoughts intruded on yours in the past. Tonight, there will be no voices, no orders, no gods. I belong only to you. You wish to consult me? From the still dark waters of Lake Donegarten, to the Black Academies of Tearbresh. It is a city of wonders and terror. But it is not my home anymore. If I were to return, I would be denied all of its wonders and shown only the terror. For my people, to reject Lolth is to reject life. I am an apostate and would be executed. Though I am proud, I prefer exile to death.
I am a daughter of Menza Baranzan's most ancient and powerful house, the Bainry. I lived a life of privilege and danger. My home was at the tallest point of Kuel Arzol, the place of the nobles, a plateau high above the city's sprawl. I enjoyed every luxury, whether harvested in the Underdark or stolen from the surface, and I survived my first assassination attempt while I still suckled at my mother's breast. I tasted her blood that day. She covered my body with her own, and a blade bit deep into her chest, almost puncturing her heart. When I came of age, she tried to take my life herself, and I gave her fresh scars to match those she earned protecting me. Yes. My house trained me to be a soldier in Loth's service, and my mother showed me how to survive the perils of society. She taught me to be resilient and to guard my heart from those who cannot be trusted, literally and figuratively. When I choose to let somebody close, I do not do so lightly. That gives a great depth of meaning to the bonds I do share. Give me courage. 